Hey guys, today on uh, Days of Glory Shopworks, we're actually, well, at daylight, it's uh, about 11, 20 after 11 at night, uh, on a weeknight, and I have a differential to assemble. So this is a differential for a 2010 Chevy Camaro SS uh, with a six-speed manual. And uh, the common thing that seems to happen to them is the LSD explodes. So this one was no different. Uh, my friend uh, bought the parts and asked me to assemble the differential for them because apparently I can assemble them okay for guys that run them hard. Even myself if I do it twice. But... So what we got here, this is a brand new uh, limited slip, I believe it's a Detroit Locker style, uh, true track I want to say. We've got the bearing kit right back here, and we got the crown gear and the pinion gear, and then we've got the case, and over here are our shims and our side uh, side bearing caps and all that jazz so uh, what we're doing tonight is we're just prepping things up to get ready to uh, do a mock-up install and see where everything lays so uh, let's let's see what happens what I like to do is I take a sanding block and this is uh, emery cloth so very fine cloth uh, sandpaper and I like to just run it over the surface of the uh, crown gear until I can see a little bit of shine and this gives us an idea of how good the surface is for mating it together because the last thing you want is to fight with a bunch of run out when you're assembling so if we take a good look here, let me wipe it off what we've got is a little tiny burr here, a um, little bit here, a bit of a high spot here compared to the rest of staying gray. And same thing, high spot, high spot, high spot. Pretty common on pretty much any differential I've ever done this to. And all we want to do is just clean it up a little bit more, make sure these aren't going to be an issue. We don't want to catch our fingernail on anything. They already feel pretty good, but let's make them a little bit better. And really that's about it. You just want to make sure the surface is smooth and free of any burrs. And we're in pretty good shape. These knock down pretty nice. I can't catch them with my nail. Even this guy that looks bad. I don't know if you can see him. Bring him right in here. See what we can do. Yeah. He's uh... He looks bad but actually he's level with the rest of the surface. So we're okay with that little deviation. No big deal. Alright. That's that part. Next, I like to take a strip of the cloth, the part that hasn't been used, and I like to clean up the pinion area here for the bearing and the crush sleeve, and then I clean up this area down here for the uh, inner pinion bearing as well. It just aids in assembly. Again, you're making sure there's no high spots. You don't want to oblong the bearing. It's, it's kind of a minute detail, but depending on the gear set you buy. These are Motive gears. I generally don't have an issue with Motive and they're their performance line so uh, pretty much the same deal as the Richmond race gears as Motive bought Richmond years ago. And this is it. Just a quick cleanup. Just running it around and then we check it. A little bit of dirt. That looks nice and even and consistent, and we also buffed up the shoulder a little bit as well. So next up, same thing on the inner pinion bearing landing. Now, don't quote me on this, but I believe we're replacing, I suppose I could check them out, 
um, but I believe we're replacing a 342 gear set. I'll double check that later and let you know. There, that looks good as well. There's no anything crazy. It polished up good. And our shim surface is in good shape as well. So these are 390s. And it seems to be a common setup for guys to upgrade to. So he's been racing the car for years and um, been doing very well with it. Uh, it's got a cam, headers, a tune, and also he does run nitrous on the car. So it, it gets run hard. It gets launched hard and, and he gives her the beans and I give him full props for that. Uh, these diffs are pretty stout all, all along, but uh, there are a weak point where they can only handle so much abuse and he just found the end of it was all. So we're upgrading it nicely to something strong that should last them a lot more time. And uh, next up, the last I want to do is I want to clean up the surface on the LSD for the, for the crown gear. We cleaned up the crown gear, so we should clean up the same surface on the LSD. That's limited slip differential if anybody cares. And again, we're just looking for little burrs or high spots. Uh, this one was dropped in shipping. Of course, the most expensive part of the whole rebuild, dropped in shipping, go figure. But, everything looks like it's coming out good. Yeah, I'm happy with that surface. I don't see anything out to launch on it. And I will give a little clean up of the side bearing. Uh, well, I don't know, the side bearing landings, I guess you would say, for lack of a better term. These surfaces are machined quite well, so I don't expect any issue with them, but again, you never know. So according to, uh, well, we'll say my customer, my buddy, um, on the bearing caps, the left cap had a strengthening plate on it. As you can see, that's steel. Let me just pull it off. The lighting's horrible tonight, but there. And the right one didn't. <clears throat> now, he's the one that pulled it apart, and I, I, I know him quite well. I've worked on his stuff before, and I've worked with him on projects before. He, he didn't just misplace one. Um, it's weird that one side would have the stiffening cap and the other side wouldn't. But I have seen more oddball things than that. And he just finished verifying for me that yes, it had only one stiffening cap. So that's how we're going to assemble it. Um, GM and their infinite wisdom must have had a reason for it. Could be something to do with the way the torque twist on the diff. Who knows? But uh, that clarifies that. I was worried a little bit. But uh, overall, we're... We're just about ready to uh, mock up assembly, so first off I'm going to install the crown gear onto the carrier. And from there I'm going to put the side bearings on the carrier. And we'll see how far we get tonight with this video. It's a little bit late and I do have work in the morning. So these ring gear bolts are a 7 16 fine thread, left hand thread. So we go down here, 7 16 all 60 to 65 foot pounds. Don't be afraid to use an impact driver to suck them down. Now, I say that with a slight caution. You just want to suck them down super evenly, and you're not talking rattling this thing to within an inch of its life. You're going to pull them down and move on to the next one, just like this.
And that's all. Um, so, we're going to leave it for the night. Uh, I forgot my uh, bearing installer. Uh, that worked. So, I'll have to uh, pick that up tomorrow and we will carry on after 5 tomorrow evening. And for me, it's going to be a night's sleep and a whole day's of work. But for you, it's going to be literally like I snap my fingers. So, it's the next day. Not really. It's a couple days later. Ran into a few little snags with some other things I was doing. But here we are. Now I'm going to give you a brief update. So what I've done is uh, I installed the new uh, inner and outer pinion uh, bearing cups. And to do that on an aluminum housing, uh, what I have found advantageous, because aluminum housings, they tend to make the tolerances tighter to keep everything squeezed in tighter because aluminum changes its characteristics with heat differently than, than regular cast iron or a steel housing does. So I put them in the fridge, in the freezer for about, I want to say two and a half hours, three hours, just kind of put them in, forgot about them, kept on working at other things. Um, anyway, I uh, got them pressed back in, uh, it was a little bit rough going, but they ended up working out really nicely, so the inner and outer pinion bearing cups are in. Also, I took the time and I took the original pinion bearing, uh, inner pinion bearing, and I turned it into a slipper bearing. So all I did was polished out the inside. It takes a little bit of while per unit, but then it just, then it just slides on like that. You got to get it lined up. It slides on good. So I put the original shim, Let's see if I can show it to you. There's the original shim. I haven't even measured it. I'm not worried about that right now. It's always the best place to start is the original shim under the pinion bearing. Bearing on. And the outer pinion bearing, I resized it as well because when you're just starting, like it just slides on there nice. But when you're just setting everything up, you don't need your crush sleeve to set and go depth. You could go through a lot of crush sleeves if you were trying to put this up every time with a crush sleeve. So, and say you have to do several shim selections. Well, that's going to be several crush sleeves. Anyway, long story short, that's where we're at with this stuff. So I got to throw a little bit of grease on these. And I also did go to the shop and I got a pinion bearing installer and a couple other things. Installed the bearing cups on the carrier, or bearing Cones, the bearing cones, I had an issue with saying the right thing at the same time. Anyway, I got the bearing cones on the carrier. Uh, as you remember, we torqued a few minutes ago for you. Um, we torqued the uh, crown gear on to the carrier. And now we're ready to do our first mock-up. So I'm going to get a few things lined up and bring you back. Goes in. Inner pinion bearing goes, outer pinion bearing goes on, and then straight to your diff yoke. So now with diff yoke on, I have to put the nut on. Now, right now, we're not looking for perfect uh, pinion bearing preload, but we want some strain on it just to know we have no play. We will set up preload on the pinion bearings when we are doing our final assembly. Alright guys, so here's where we're sitting at right now. You can see my dial indicator. Uh, it actually took me probably an hour of uh, pulling it out, putting it in, pulling it out, putting it in, to get the uh, side bearing preload 
and the right backlash set up. Now I still haven't checked pattern yet, but right now we've got a happy 5 thou backlash and that's right on par for the tight side. They say a minimum of 3 to 10, but prefer 5 to 7. So we're right at 5. I set every diff that I know is going to go racing. I set them up on the tight side because when you have everything under extreme loads, they f they want to pull apart. They want to they want to just force themselves further apart. So if you can do it right, then even forcing themselves hard apart, they're still within the maximum spec, and that's kind of a safety load level for me. It's the best I can do anyway. So we got our backlash set up, and I still don't even know if our pinion depth is correct. We might have to go through all of this again. That's the fun fun of rear axles. But for now, we are going to try and do a pattern check. Oh, incidentally, you see this guy? That's just a mounting ring from some, you know, tuner car uh, strut brace. That's all it was. But since this is aluminum, my magnetic uh, uh, dial indicator base will not obviously hold on to it. And I didn't have, uh, I, I figured I'd take the easiest thing to do. So now I just have to add some pattern paint. There we go. A good friend of mine likes to do is he will take a wrench, put it on one of the ring gear bolts, right? And then he will use the ratchet on the other end and he'll kind of force the two of them together and away from each other to get the best pattern. So let's see if we can accomplish that. We just go the other way once we know we've cleared. Alright, so I know I went around all the way. So... Okay, we've got a much better picture here. Now I'll take you in for a close-up. So here we are. If you look, coast side actually looks wonderful. Right in the middle, full extent to the edge. Like, sorry, the, the contact pattern stops well before the edge. It's right in the dang middle, top and bottom as well. And consistent. Man, I like that. And then if we go for drive side, same thing. It's a, like I said, it's a little bit close to the uh, to the inside of the tooth, but that means that even under full strain, and the pinion's trying to force itself away, we're always going to have good engagement. All right, guys, crushed leave is crushed, and I painted up the end of the flange just to make it look prettier. Um, uh, I actually had to put a second crush sleeve in. Uh, the first crush sleeve would not crush, and I know most of the tricks. Um, put it in a vise, smack it with a hammer uh, to get it started to crush, you know. Um, I actually took it down to the shop, used our shop press on it. Didn't work. Um, 
several different ways to try it and go about it and do it. Didn't work. Um, ended up getting a new crush sleeve. So that was Saturday. Today's Monday. I just picked up a new crush sleeve at GM. And uh, it worked. It was still a fight, but it actually did what it was supposed to do. It just kept crushing and crushing and crushing. And Anyway, long story short, pinion's done. Um, and now I can put in the uh, carrier. But what I was saying earlier in the video about taking the, uh, taking the manufacturer of the gears at their torque specs for the ring gear bolts, that's true. I'll do that anyway. But when the manufacturer doesn't take into consideration that there are metric bolts versus standard bolts and everything in the instructions in here are for standard bolts. So there's our list right there. And if you look, there, I get you as close as I can. They are all for standard bolts and we're running metric bolts because this is an American Axle uh, 218 millimeter American Axle it's it's all metric parts inside of it um, also uh, so I have to retorque the bolts I checked the torque on the bolts is, on the crown gear bolts is actually 89 foot pounds but if anybody's interested the factory uh, for new bearings is 14 to 19 inch pounds of rotational torque on the pinion uh, without the carrier in there and they want about an extra 10 to 15 inch pounds with the carrier in there so we actually have 20 inch pounds and I'm happy as heck with that I just finished torquing in my bearing cap bolts after torquing the uh, ring gear bolts. Uh, ring gear bolts went to 89 foot pounds, bearing cap bolts go to 77 foot pounds, uh, and you always double check your backlash. If your backlash hasn't changed, then you're okay, you just go ahead and do things up. But my backlash has changed, it's gotten tighter. So I effectively, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure my rotational torque on the pinion. And if it's uh, like 20 plus, say, 10 to 15, so if it's about 30, 35 rotational torque, then I know I've got the right preload on my bearings. And then all I have to do is pull like 3 thou, 4 thou out of that side and put it into this side. And that'll take care of it, because then my, my rotational torque won't change, but it will change my, uh, my backlash.
Alright guys, so we're happy now. Um, I mixed up my shims. Not side to side, but they're like a stack of shims together, right? So I took the middle stacks out of the two larger casings that you noticed. And what I didn't realize was one of the outer casings, one of the larger shims, was actually 20 thou different size. So I completely screwed up when I mismatched my shims because I put it all together, torqued everything down, and then I couldn't move the pinion. I'm like, what is going on? So it turns out, re-measured everything, figured out what I did wrong, and then I actually got it right. So now we've arrived at uh, six thou backlash. You you could argue for six and a half thou, but a comfortable six thou backlash, which five is the minimum spec, and I'm happy with that. Very happy. Everything is now torqued in place. And I'm just going to show you the pattern that we pulled out of it. We're a little low on the tooth, which I love, which means we got full engagement all the way. And it is nice and even all the way up around. It doesn't deviate. I'm very happy with that. It should be nice and quiet. And on our coast side, we are smack dab. Here, let me... Boy, this doesn't want to focus. So there. There's our coast side. Oh boy, focus. Your focus needs more focus. So we are smack dab in the middle and a nice even wipe along the tooth. So that again should equal out to a nice quiet coast side, nice quiet drive side. Uh, I know he'll break the differential in properly, possibly a little over anal retentively actually, which is great. I never have to worry about this friend of mine uh, whenever I'm doing work for him. And uh, he's going to treat it appropriately and then he's going to give her beans. So long story short, we're just about done with this thing. I got to pop in the side bearings. You didn't see, but I did put the pinion uh, seal in and I just got to put the side axle seals in. And that's all she wrote. He's got the cover, and he actually picked up an aftermarket cover that will put extra load on, you know, on the saddle caps and everything. Um, again, I did retorque my uh, uh, crown gear bolts, and if you can see, I don't know if you can. Let me try this. But if you can see, I actually put a mark on each one of the bolts so a mark and a line on the on the uh, LSD and that way I'll know if something does happen to it if something's rattling apart or what's going on with it so overall we are happy and we're finally finished this one I'd like to say thank you very much for watching please uh, like and subscribe to, vid to the videos I'm, I'm enjoying making them and I'm going to continue to make them I hope you guys are getting something out of them and uh, if you got a comment on how you think I can improve, let me know. Hit the comments. I, I respond to as many as I can. Um, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks very much and have a good night.